Y'all, did you know that you could rearrange your settings, customize your lock screen, and theme your icon pack all without installing a launcher? Yeah, we're gonna get into all of that in this video on top of some additional tips and tricks, some things you can do with your S Pen, and some new things within the camera app all on the Galaxy S23 Ultra. I will say some of these tips and tricks are not exclusive to the S23 Ultra lineup, but some of them are. All right, so with that said, let's dive into the first one. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about, like when you first get your phone out the box, one thing I feel that you should do is to head into your settings and go ahead and adjust the resolution. Now, sometimes I have trouble remembering where certain things are, and this is one of those cases, so I'ma just go here and search. So that's another quick tip if you didn't know. Search in your settings, and it's a lot easier sometimes. But I'ma tap here for screen resolution, scroll down, tap screen resolution down there. And you're gonna make sure you're happy with the setting here because by default, it comes out the box like this. But I like to upgrade mine to that. Now the second thing you're gonna wanna change is what your power key does. Cause by default out of the box, it pulls up Bixby and you may or may not want that. So in the event you'd rather it be the power key, which is what I think a lot of us are accustomed to that side key being, this is how you would do it. So you're gonna head into your settings. Again, we're gonna use that search function and we're gonna search for side key. And that's gonna be in advanced features. And the nice thing about using the search option too, y'all, is that when you have something that's, you know, deeper within your settings, it's nice because it basically jumps you there versus you happen to like manually click on display and then wallpaper, you know, you get where I'm going. Back to this, side key. So once you're in here, we're gonna go down here to the press and hold option and we're gonna tap power off menu. So now when you hold down the side key over here, it gives you your power off menu. But if you find that you'd rather have the wake Bigsby option, then the way that you would power your phone off instead would be to slide down to your power menu here and hit the power key here. Did I say slide down to your power menu? <laughs> But if you instead would like to keep the Bixby option enabled here, the way you would then power off your phone is to slide down from the top here, press the power icon, and then power off like that. Now, another thing you might wanna change is your wallpaper. And the way that you would go about doing that is to hop into your settings, go down to wallpaper and style, and then you can come in here and change your wallpaper. And something I like in here is that you can actually select more than one wallpaper so that if it's hard to pick one, you don't have to. <laughs> Something else that you might wanna change in here is the color palette, which is gonna to try to theme different areas of your phone to match your wallpaper. So everything's a bit more cohesive and just visually appealing. So you can come in here and toggle that on. And then what you can do is basically go through here and pick one that you like. And then once you're done, you can hit apply. And now things like your quick settings and your call screen are gonna be themed. And another thing that I really like to change is the way that I navigate. So I like to use gestures instead, like sliding up to access my multitask switcher and things like that. All right, so to do that, we're gonna head into our settings. We're gonna search for navigation. And we're gonna go down here to navigation type. <laughs> we're gonna go down here to navigation type and tap on it. That was a little tongue twister. <laughs> and we're gonna enable swipe gestures. Now on top of that, another thing that I like to do when I get into my phone is come in here and adjust the little quick toggles. So the way that you would go about doing that is to come up here and tap the three dots and then select edit buttons and you can choose which buttons that you want to add in here or which buttons you want to remove but yeah i'll worry about that later i still haven't adjusted mine but that's something i need to do and another feature that i use a lot is the search function on the phone like when i can't find an app i will definitely swipe up come here and tap where it says search and then just look for what i need i do that even sometimes when the app is literally right there because sometimes i think about going to the search option before i even see the app and another thing that i would highly recommend to do when you get your phone out the box is to explore modes and routines. Now I'm not going to dive into those things in this video because that's too extensive. But if you want a, you know, separate video on it, we can talk. Just let me know down below in the comment section and I will do my best to work on it. But ultimately this is going to allow like a series of events to happen based on one action. So you can put your phone in something like work mode and limit the use of certain apps so that you lessen your distractions. I love about having a display size this large is how nice it is to be able to use two apps up here at once. Now, one way you can go about doing that is to swipe up into your multitask switcher and then tap on this little grid here in the bottom left. And this is gonna instantly pull up your most recently used application and then allow for you to pair it with another app down here. And then we can just choose one from there. 
thing I'll say though, is that some apps aren't able to work within that multi-window view. So the way that you would change that so that they do is to go here, we're gonna search for labs within your settings. And then we're gonna tap on labs at the top and we're gonna turn on multi-window for all apps. And that way, whether the app is supposed to work in multi-window view or not, it will. Now, for those of you that need you know, the option to run two different versions of the same app, meaning you might use WhatsApp and have two different logins, but you want to be able to access both on this phone, there's actually a way that you can do that. So what you're gonna do is head into your settings and then we're gonna search for dual messenger. And once we're in here, we're gonna tap that at the bottom and then it's gonna toggle on the option for you to have two different apps for two different accounts. So I'm gonna do that for WhatsApp, for example, and it's gonna confirm here. You can even take it a step further and have it use a separate contact list for the second app. Boom, so now I have two copies of WhatsApp installed. All right, so this is what I teased at the beginning of the video. And it's this app called Goodlock. It's actually found in the Samsung store. This is how I was able to customize my lock screen, rearrange my settings, and put an icon pack on my phone all without a launcher. But it's definitely one of those that like I must download. It basically allows you to further customize the One UI up here without having to install an additional launcher. Because sometimes I don't want to have to rely on a launcher or the launcher does more than what I want it to do. But good luck has definitely been coming in clutch. So the way that you're going to download it is actually to head into the Samsung store, Galaxy store, and we're going to search for good luck. Then once you're in here, you're gonna download it. And then once you're in the app, you have to go through and like choose the different modules, I guess you would call them, that you wanna install onto your phone. So I've downloaded a couple, but I'm not gonna dive into them in this video. I do have a um, What's On My Galaxy S23 Ultra video coming up where I dive a little bit deeper, not only in this app, but basically what I have installed on my phone. So definitely be on the lookout for that if you haven't subscribed and you are interested. Now might be a good time to do so that you can be notified when that video drops. Lockstar is basically how I customize my lock screen and Theme Park is what I use to customize my icon pack. And I was able to rearrange my settings using this here called Registar. Now, this is just kind of like a neat feature in which it does, which is that you can double tap the screen to turn it off or on. I don't know if you knew that or not, but I felt like it was worth mentioning. And I wanna say that's on by default. I don't remember turning that on. But if you want to know where it is within your settings, you would hop into your settings. And what we would search for is motion and gestures. And then we would tap on that section in here and that's where you'll find the two options. Now, another thing you can do is actually remove an image from its background. So the way that you go about doing that is within your gallery app, you're gonna long press on your photo. It's gonna get that little circle animation and then it extracts it from the background and we can do things like either save it as an image or I can long press it and hit share. It'll give me different share options, but I think it's kind of cute, honestly, to go into Instagram and get creative there by posting it to your stories. So once you're here, you can resize it and then you can do different things like maybe add a certain effect on it. You know, you can just have fun in here, hit done, but just a few things to think about. Text shortcuts. This right here, don't sleep on it y'all, is basically gonna let you type a phrase to be an actual word. I don't think I did the best explanation of that. Let me just show you. So we're gonna head into our settings and then within the Samsung keyboard section, we're gonna tap on text shortcuts. And that is something to note, it will only work on the Samsung keyboard. We're gonna go then to text shortcuts and within this section here is where you would then hit the plus symbol. And you're gonna wanna use a shortcut for like something you would commonly write. Maybe like for something like your email, your address or your phone number, you can come here and type in the shortcut. Let's Let's just say your email. So we're gonna put the shortcut being E, M, and then it's gonna expand to hello at gmail.com. Then we're gonna select add. And so now anytime that I'm in my phone and I type E, M, it's gonna auto complete to that. Next few tips are gonna be in reference to the S Pen. But my favorite features with the S Pen actually are in the camera app. And that's because this acts as a Bluetooth remote on top of remote to control your camera. So you can do things like press the side button to take a photo, or if you press and hold it, it'll actually do a burst series of photos. And if you double press it, it flips the camera. Or you can take it and press and hold and swipe, and it'll rotate your camera modes. And if you take it and swirl it, it will zoom into your camera. But on top of it being good for this, it's also good for when you're listening to your music because you can just swipe through your music, or if you're in your gallery, you can just swipe through your pictures. Now, 
When it comes to the camera here, y'all, I'll say in being the type of person that, you know, uses iOS and Android, there are scenarios where, you know, I wanna transfer photos from my Galaxy device to my computer on my iPhone. And I found a couple of practical ways to go about doing so. So one way I send photos from my Galaxy device here to my iPhone is to head into my gallery. And then what you're gonna do is long press on the photo that you want. And this is gonna allow you then to drag and select more. And then we're gonna hit the share option. And once we're in here, we're gonna select Quick share, and it's within this section that we can then share using a QR code. So now on my iPhone, I'm gonna go to my camera app and I'm going to scan that QR code. And then I can just come in here and select download and it's gonna download the full resolution photos onto my phone. Now for those of you trying to transfer photos from your Galaxy to a Mac computer, the best way that I have found is to use this app called AirDroid. You were able to do it via Dex in the past, but Samsung's not updating that on the Mac anymore, so I wouldn't, you know, get too comfortable with it. But so far, AirDroid has been working good for me. You basically have to download it onto your Mac computer as well as onto your Galaxy device. And then when they're on the same Wi-Fi network, you're able to send photos from your Galaxy to your Mac pretty easily. Now with the S23 Ultra lineup, there is a new feature in the camera app that lets you utilize astrophotography. And this one was really appealing to me because I love stargazing. And now I'm able to capture some really nice photos with my phone as well as see the constellations in the sky from my phone. So instead of you like taking a photo of a star and guessing what it is, you can actually toggle on this little sky guide that will show you what star you're looking at. You can even change the duration and shutter speed to you know further customize your settings here and capturing your photo. Now something else you have within the camera app is the option to remove an item from a picture and it's known as object eraser. So the way that you would go about doing that is within the gallery app, you're gonna find the photo you wanna do that to, tap the pencil icon in the bottom. We're gonna tap the three dots here in the bottom right and then we're gonna select object eraser. And now we can just circle the item we wanna erase. It's gonna highlight it, tap erase and boom. It's gone. And I don't think it did a bad job actually in removing me from the picture. <laughs> so if I wanted to keep this, I'm going to select apply, but you can always revert back to the original. Now something else new with the S23 Ultra is the option for pro mode with the front facing camera. So some things you can then customize would be like the white balance, your focus, your shutter speed, ISO, all of those little goodies can now be controlled. To me, Samsung devices, they're like the creator's phone. Like if you do any type of social media and you're in the market for a new phone, the camera alone and the features that you have with the phone coupled with that, to me, just makes this an easy recommendation. And you tag in this S Pen, like I might not use it for everything that I do on my phone, but I do have my scenarios, especially as of late, that I'm like, I'm glad that I have this and not just my finger. Cause sometimes, especially with these creative tools, it's hard to finally select things like in CapCut when I'm trying to select a transition area or when I'm customizing things and it's something small that I have to, you know, grab. Yeah, this right here is much, much more useful. It's more precise. Now, something else you're gonna wanna make sure that you have enabled within your camera app is raw mode. So the way that you go about accessing that is to go to pro mode, your gear icon, and we're gonna go to advanced picture options. And down here where it says pro mode format, we're gonna tap that and select raw and JPEG formats. That way it does both. And that way when you take a raw picture, you can like have full control so that if you know, something was too bright or too dark, you can better adjust it and maintain the quality of the image. Now, one thing to note with taking raw images is that it's gonna take up more space on your phone. So if you wanna combat that, I would highly suggest that you go in here to, you know, your photo section, tap on the gear icon, and then go to advanced picture options and turn on high efficiency pictures. That way, you know, it'll take it in a format that's gonna give you the same quality, but taking up less space on your phone. And while I'm in here, there's another feature that I really liked which was in shooting um, shooting methods this is gonna let you find or control how you start to capture things so you can show your poem which is my favorite one and I actually thought it was a wave I thought you had a wave at it and that's how it detected it nonetheless if you show your poem to the camera app it will instantly start recording or take your photo which again like I said creators when you are a one-man band out there and you're doing everything solo this S Pen and things like that make a huge difference you can also turn on voice commands so that you can take a picture by saying smile or cheese. But yeah, as you can see, there's just uh, 
so, 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 so much you can do with this phone. I could go on and on and on, but I think I have covered enough in this one video. However, if you do want me to make part two, let me know down below in the comment section and I will see what I can do. In the meantime though, if you wanna stay updated on what's going on with me or when another video is gonna drop, you can feel free to follow me on IG at Tech Me Out. That's T-E-C-H-M-E zero U-T. But in addition to that, what's on my S23 Ultra video, I'm also working on my review video of this and some other little goodies. So definitely stay tuned, but until the next one, y'all, as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.